Hi, good morning, everybody. Today's topic is a question that is dear to my heart. How do you determine what business or what venture is right for you? How do you determine whether lashes is something that you want to do? You know, before you invest in a course, before you invest into buying all sorts of products or starter kits, how do you know if it's something that's gonna work for you or not, or that you're even gonna enjoy? My name is Irene, I am the CEO and founder of Lash Therapeutics, and I bring to you a series of videos to do with entrepreneurship, lashing, and business in general. Here's my take on that question. Number one is to go ahead and try it. Do it in the most cost-effective and time-efficient way that you possibly can. I don't believe that you have to invest into courses or products when you first get started to even decide whether it's something that you would enjoy or something that you would like to pursue and continue on with. There are multiple suppliers online that you can research and get some products off, just some starter ones, not ones you're actually going to use on clients. And you can just pick up a tweezer and you can pick up a tray and you can see if you have enough kind of eye power, I call it, to focus in and actually see fine extension lashes because real human lashes are even finer than that. So if you pick up a tray and a tweezer and your hands and your fingers don't like it and your body doesn't like it and your eyes, you can't train your eyes to see that well, then you know you can't even go on to the next step which is practicing with real fine lashes on a human. You know, go out and try it. It's a really big piece of advice that I would give anybody aspiring to do something new, whether it's a business venture or even a hobby. I practice this throughout my whole life. If there's something that I'm interested in, I go ahead and just try it. Not everything needs a huge, huge investment up front. You know, trying it can be as simple as going on YouTube and finding point of view videos from other people who have done it before, whether it's a new sport, having a personal trainer, whether it's starting a new business in a lashes. When I first started, I did a ton of research on YouTube. YouTube is one of my best resources ever. I love it. But aside from that, talk to people. You talk to friends, talk to business owners, talk to people that you go and see for your personal services. Go to people who already are doing the hobbies that you're looking into and ask them their advice. Now, I will include a caveat here. You do want to talk to people who are generally positive and are not going to try to rain on your parade because often the people who you go to advice are going to be the people that you listen to. If you don't want anybody to kind of cloud your judgment, don't even talk to anybody, just do your research, be objective about it, and you know yourself best. So lay out kind of what your rules are, what time you're willing to invest in yourself. Be really authentic with yourself when you ask yourself those questions. So that's number one, is to actually go out and, and try it and because you have nothing to lose, especially during COVID right now when you have so much time on your hands, why not go out and learn a new skill? And that can be online in the comfort of your own home or that can be through sending a few emails or making some phone calls, sending out some messages on social media platforms to start talking to people in the community or even joining some groups on Facebook or other communities out there. The second advice that I would say specifically pertaining to lashes is that it is a very physically demanding and muscle memory oriented skill set. So I would liken it maybe to something like sewing with a needle and thread. The reason why when I think about it, I think of what kind of analogy would be good. Muscle memory in the sense, actually I would also say maybe something like, like texting as well. <laughs> you know when you text on your phone without looking at it? Remember when we used to have QWERTY keyboards or like tactile keys? Blackberries were still around or like a QWERTY keypad. Maybe text and look away for a second and then you still would hit the right keys. Not that you should do that with lashes but what I mean by that is that sometimes when you're lashing you're not always using your eye to put the lash down like a lot of time it's kind of knowing where it should go and being familiar with depth of field and when you're lashing and picking up stuff and when you're putting down stuff it's a little bit of a trained eye and also a trained muscle with your fingers and your hands so the movements are very trained and familiar so why I liken it to sewing with a needle and thread is because Although you do have to be precise with the movements and the positioning, the actual motion of it with the needle and the thread, even though it's a dangerous point, is kind of ingrained in your muscles once you learn the skill. Same with extension. So gripping your tweezers, holding your tweezers, what angles to put them in, what positions your hands are, where do you put your hands on, on the client, how do you position it so that they're comfortable. It's a lot of muscle memory. It, it is not for someone who has shaky hands, unfortunately. That 
that is the one thing that you really do need is um, somewhat steady hands. I don't have the most steady hands, so I'm not gonna say you need 100% like surgeon hands because you learn how to steady your hands through different stabilization techniques with different hand positioning as well as tweezer positioning. And I'll go through that in later videos. Hand stability, at least a decent amount of it, is required. You can't be you know someone who's drinking five coffees a day and always having shaky hands like that wouldn't work but if you have genuinely pretty steady hands maybe your eye can focus well enough and doesn't get strained or tired too easily and there are ways you can train that i believe but that's also something that's really important and if you're a go-getter and someone who is able to be consistent at kind of learning something new a new skill set as you have to be diligent when you first learn any new skill then it could potentially be something for you and potentially you can do really good at but people are so concerned about certain small minute details that eventually you're just going to learn with time and through practice bigger questions is whether you're able to do it yourself, whether you're able to promise and deliver on your own goals, and what are your goals really? So um, really get down and serious about that and having that conversation with your yourself, an inner dialogue if you will. I think that's where that is going to stem from. You know yourself best, make a decision for yourself, and start looking into things. So that's all for today, and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao!